Hello again YouTube, Winston here. It's been quite a few weeks since my last video, and that's because I was busy doing things like going to the New York Auto Show, tracking my SUV at NJMP's Lightning Raceway, and blowing out my eardrums at Meguiar AFB's 2014 Air Show. But I'm back, for now, and this week I want to talk about 3D milling. More specifically, the software involved in generating toolpaths. For my past few projects, I've been using MeshCam to generate G-code for my Shapeoko. So far, it's worked quite well for my needs. But for those of you who are just starting out in CNC, you might be wondering if you really need to shell out two or three hundred dollars just to enter the wonderful world of 3D milling. The short answer is no. There are a handful of options out there that you can download for free and start using with just a few clicks. The long answer is a little more complicated. While there are indeed free 3D CAM programs out there, you really need to try them out for yourself to see if their features, capabilities, and limitations are a good fit for your application. Before I start rambling on and on about 3D CAM programs though, I want to address something a bit more fundamental, to the best of my knowledge at least. It's a question I received, and I'm liberally paraphrasing here, what is the difference between 2.5D and 3D milling? If you use your CNC to draw something with a pen, like I did for my Hello World test, you're making a 2D image. If you extrude that shape outwards, you technically have a 3D object, but its complexity is really no greater than that of its flat equivalent. The milling strategy for a part like this would be considered a 2.5D operation. A true 3D part is one with curves or angles that can't be defined in the XY plane alone. An example of this would be something like a hemisphere. And while you could approximate a hemisphere with 2.5D methods by repeatedly stacking flat disks or something, that kind of tedium isn't really going to help you with more complex geometries down the road. You're going to want a true 3D CAM program for that kind of work. But the complexity of 3D space makes generating toolpaths significantly harder, which is why so few free solutions exist. But exist they do, and here are two that I'll be trying out today. FreeMill is a program made by Mechsoft, and it's a cut-down version of their commercial Visual Mill module. The good thing about this is that it leverages the nice GUI and solid performance of their commercial Visual CAD CAM software suite. The bad thing about this is that when I say FreeMill is a cut-down version of Visual Mill, I mean completely stripped bare. There's only one milling strategy available to users, and very few options or operations that you can play around with. PyCam is an open-source path generation program for 3-axis CNC machines with some pretty ambitious goals. It supports STL files and 2D vector images, as well as a number of pathing strategies. The project looks like it's still under active development, unlike some other CAM programs, which is good. But since PyCAM is free and isn't paying anyone's rent, the execution of certain features isn't quite as good as in other programs. To put these two programs to the test, I decided to start with a simple object from Thingiverse and compare the experiences of generating G-code in each. I wasn't going to look at metrics like machining time or part quality, because those things can really only be optimized with a lot of time-consuming experimentation. Instead, I was interested in the overall process, like how easy was it to create G-code, what useful features were there, did the program even work? The first two questions are somewhat subjective, but I'm happy to report that the programs definitely do work. How well they work, however, is something I invite you guys to assess after watching this video, or even better, after trying them out for yourselves. Let's start with FreeMill. This was one of the first programs I came across when I was doing research in preparation for my Shapeoko purchase, thanks in no small part to its Google search rank. The STL file I decided to do my comparison with was a Mazda logo, if only because I was thinking about my car at the time, and because I knew it had a nice curving form that couldn't be produced using 2.5D methods. Opening up FreeMill, I found the user interface well laid out and a pleasure to use. This was my first time creating G-code in the program, so I had no idea what to expect. File compatibility was quite good, with the program accepting iGIS, STEP, STL files, and more. My logo was imported without any issues. The menus for machining are set up in a very logical manner. The first pane pretty much confirms that we are using a vertical milling machine. The second lets us define the size of our stock material, which is really only useful if our stock material is thicker than our model. The third panel lets us place our origin in one of 54 preset locations, or at a user-specified location, which is probably unnecessary. The fourth set of options allows us to define our cutter, be it a flat end mill, ball end mill, or something in between. The fifth establishes basic milling parameters, two of which we don't really care about. Spindle speed is manually controlled, and retract speed doesn't matter. The sixth panel shows the biggest limitation of FreeMill. It only has one milling strategy, X or Y passes. In addition, it doesn't do roughing operations. It removes all of your material in one pass. If you have a particularly deep pattern to machine, FreeMill pretty much guarantees that you're going to snap your cutter. On the plus side, this means that your machine code is generated very quickly. In terms of a post-processor, you want to end up with the most generic G-code possible. Mach 3 tends to be a pretty safe bet. I saved the G-code and visualized it in OpenScam. As you can see, the Nmil hugs the 3D model, removing all the material in one pass. 
unless you're engraving something shallower than about 1 8 of an inch, this is going to put a lot of stress on your spindle. Next up was PyCam. I opened up the program and... well, it didn't quite go to plan. Just to make sure there was nothing strange going on with my STL file, I opened up the same model in MeshCam. Everything seemed to be working, so I went ahead and set up a machining operation to convince myself that Freemill hadn't simply gotten lucky with this file. The machine code MeshCam spits out clearly works its way down to the surface of the geometry in layers, which is generally how you're supposed to machine things. MeshCam 1, PyCam 0, Freemill 0 0.5. Getting back to PyCam, however, I really wanted to give it a shot, so I downloaded another STL file. This time PyCam accepted it, and I went about playing around with the interface. Similarly to FreeMill, all of your major features seem to be laid out logically in tabs, although the wording and arrangement of certain options may make PyCam more difficult to understand. In the first tab, you have all the usual options for setting up your workpiece thrown at you all at once. One thing of note that FreeMill doesn't seem to support is tabs, supports, or bridges. PyCam calls them model extensions, which I suppose is an acceptable nomenclature if you really twist my arm. In the second tab, you can set up various end mills. PyCam supports tool changes, so you can do roughing with one cutter, and then switch to a ball end mill for finishing. In the third tab, you can set up your various machining operations like roughing and finishing passes. Here is where PyCam is infinitely more useful than FreeMill. You have a whole bunch of different strategies that will intelligently remove material in layers, instead of mashing the cutter all the way into your stock material. Unfortunately, this amount of choice can also be a bad thing. Each of the pathing strategies is listed with pros and cons, or warnings about its applicability in various situations. It leaves PyCam feeling very much like beta software. The fourth tab is just like MeshCam's Machine Geometry Plus Tolerance feature, allowing you to machine as little margin as you desire. The fifth tab allows you to export machining operations as one or more files. This allows you to perform tool changes without relying on your CNC's pause and resume functionality. Unfortunately, when you go to generate your NC program, PyCam takes forever. I'm not sure if it's the particular pathing strategy I picked, or just inherent in PyCam, but running a simple project like this takes an order of magnitude longer than it should. Here's what it looks like compared to MeshCam and sped up. In the end though, PyCam does produce usable G-code, so yes, you can indeed get started in 3D milling without spending any money on a CAM program. I would avoid free mill for anything other than small trinkets from Thingiverse, but PyCam seems to have some pretty good capabilities and features baked in. Unsurprisingly, it doesn't have the same level of polish as MeshCam, but given the price difference, I would have hoped that that was the case. This wraps up my brief evaluation of these two CAM programs. I hope it helps a few of you out there who might be starting out in CNC. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you in about two weeks with an upgraded plywood shoulder stock from my Hexnut Slingshot.